Hey everyone, welcome to another one of my favorite videos. It's the Throwback Thursday video series and this time we are looking at products that I loved or wore back in September of 2011. I am so happy that some other YouTubers are finally doing this as a regular addition to their channels. And Miss Budget Beauty, who some of you may already watch, if you don't, she is a YouTuber in the UK. She is absolutely lovely and I think we're going to, we have a little burgeoning friendship going on, a little mutual love affair, if you will. And um, she started doing these videos and in her most recent one, which I will link below, she had the brilliant idea, she has her laptop or her desktop computer in the background and she actually had it kind of playing in the background and she did some really awesome editing and put in some shots of, like over here, of the original video and the products that she was using back then. And so since she borrowed an idea from me, I'm gonna turn around and borrow another idea right back from her and I will try to insert clips over here, which is why I'm sitting a little off center, um, to kind of give you an idea of what things looked, back, looked like back then. Of course, I will link the entire video below in the description box, list all the products from then and what I'm using in place of them. So expect quite a lengthy description box. And of course, I always list pretty much everything that I have on my body as far as makeup and hair, not hair products, um, earrings, accessories, clothing, what have you. Um, but if it's not listed, please feel free to ask and I will try to get you the information. Okay, so I'm gonna start with something that was not actually mentioned in the video, but was what I was wearing. I have printed out the description box <laughs> from that video and I was wearing my all-time, I think it is still my all-time favorite um, eye palette. It's the Stila, well now it's called In the Light Palette. It used to be called, um, what was it called? Natural Eyes Palette. And um, I love it so much. I actually um, bought this for my mom for her birthday this year, which was, uh, which will be the day before this video airs. So hopefully I've not just spoiled that for her. Anyway. I was wearing that in the video, but I'm wearing the shadows in a way that I've never worn them before. I usually um, do a shimmer, well, anyway, I used all the matte shades on my eyes. And then I did a little bit of sparkle on my lid. So it's just a very versatile palette. If you want an all matte look, you can definitely do that with this if you want a more shimmery look. Love it, still love it. Three years old, haven't used the whole thing up, but, um, and it's still available in the stores and online. So rumors of its um, being discontinued I think are highly exaggerated. Okay, now let's talk about the stuff I actually talk about in the video. First thing I had mentioned was this e.l.f. lipstick called Classy and I apologize that I did not go on the e.l.f. website to find out if it is still available. I have actually not used this in years. I'm wearing it right now and I spent the better part of the morning swatching this lipstick up against my entire lipstick collection and realized I have nothing exactly like it. It is a one of a kind color in my collection. It is very similar to a lot of colors. I believe, um, I know that I found this color because it was recommended by Emily Eddington, Emily Noel 83. By the way, congratulations on your baby girl. Um, it was supposed to be a dupe for Mac Angel. Close, but not the same. And that's pretty much how I found my entire collection going. I would swatch a million, I swatched quite a few lipsticks and nothing was exactly the same. Um, the closest I got was the CoverGirl Make Me Pink. Is this CoverGirl? Or is this Maybelline? It's Maybelline. Make Me Pink was very close. It's right there. So um, if the classy lipstick is not available anymore. You can get the Maybelline in Make Me Pink, which is another one of my favorites. The next one I mentioned, um, the next two are both part of the Revlon Color Burst collection that no longer exists. I still, to the life of me, do not understand why you would discontinue a product that is a cult classic, a favorite, a bestseller, but what have you. Um, the two that I mentioned were Petal and Soft Rose. I still have Petal. I don't really use it. Um, it's very shimmery and sheer, and I'm not really sure. I'm just, I've moved away from the nudes, and I've been trying to swatch again my entire collection, and I really had a hard time finding anything that was close to it. The closest I found was at the other end of the price spectrum, and this is a Dior Addict lipstick in color 359 Pink Empress, which I don't know if it's limited edition or not, but it looks like that. It's very also sheer and kind of peachy pink in tone, but still not a dead-on dupe. So 
Those petal was a great color for what it was, but I personally, if I had to repurchase it, I would pass on it now. It's just not a color that I think is particularly flattering on me. The other one, Soft Rose, I don't even have anymore. I actually used it up, which rarely happens. And it was sort of a deeper, um, plummier color. Um, the L'Oreal, this little, I think it's the Color Riche Caress. I've mentioned this a lot of times. It's Rose Taffeta. I'll start swatching on the other hand. Um, it's more of this color family or uh, Max Syrup is actually not too far off. I could swatch all day long. They're a similar color family, but it's more of a deeper, rosier, plummier tone, and I don't even have it anymore, but it was a great color. Next was the NYX Mega Lip Gloss in Cosmo. This was my phase where I was obsessed with NYX lip glosses, just absolutely obsessed, and I have to tell you, I don't really wear a lot of lip gloss anymore. Really the only gloss type thing I reach for is the Clarins Instant Light Lip Perfector and I'm actually about to order a second one because I love them so much. This is the original one. This is the three year old lip gloss. Um, that's gross and it needs to go away. It still smells good. It doesn't smell off. I'll swatch it for you if you're into lip glosses. I will tell you that this is a beautiful lip gloss on its own. It's beautiful layered over um, other lipsticks or lip liner. But mine is going in the trash. No one should have a lip gloss for three years. That's nasty. Okay. Um, Boots Extracts Body Butter in Brazil Nut. I use that guy up and I am, you know, I don't think anyone sticks with the body butter for very long. I will say a couple favorite body butters. I still love the um, Body Shop ones. My summer scent is the Satsuma scent. This is the little travel size. They have a similar scent to the Brazil Nut one. It's a little more fall toned, I'd say. And in that is, this was given to me by Jamie Greenberg. This is the Josie Marin Whipped Argan Oil. This has a really nice scent and a hair. Ew, sorry. Um, as you can see, I've used quite a lot of it. This is a little more citrusy, but it has that Brazil nut undertone to it. And lately what I've been using, um, it's filthy because I keep it in the same drawer as my self tanners, is the Colleen Rothschild Body Lotion, which I just absolutely love. But it does not have the richness and greasiness of a body butter. So um, I'm just really fickle. You know, it's basically whatever scent I like the best. But I will say as far as moisturizing properties go, Body Shop ones are really good. Uh, next is the e.l.f. Golden Bronzer. And this is funny. I completely forgot that I had this thing. It's just something I have, I've moved some makeup around and this went in a drawer of stuff that doesn't get used very often. It looks like this. As you can see, this has been used a lot. And I've been noticing lately that my, I feel like my bronzer is making me look a little flat. I do want some shimmer to it, but I don't wanna have a bronzer that has shimmer in it. I still like the matte bronzer, but then maybe layer something over it. And I've been trying the Mark Touch and Glow and it has that, sort of effect, but it wasn't exactly what I was looking for until I was looking through the list of stuff I had talked about in September 2011 and saw this and I thought, that's what I've been looking for. I already have it in my collection. I'm wearing it today over my regular bronzer and I really like, it gives you that glow with glow from within look without really depositing a ton of color on your face. Um, and I love this and it's cheap and you can get it at Target, you can get it online. I think it's available internationally if you're into cruelty free stuff vegan, this is your guy. So I shouldn't say vegan. I don't know about vegan, but cruelty free. Yes. Okay. Moving along. Bare Minerals Nude Beach. Um, I definitely went through a pigment phase and um, haven't done it as much, frankly, because I'm, I feel like pigments take loose eyeshadow in general. It takes more time and more care and I'm just busier and I feel more rushed. So it's not something I reach for, but I have actually worn this in the last month, the Bare Minerals Nude Beach. I can't remember if I mentioned it. It's a beautiful, it's beautiful. It just, it is. There it is. Look, that shimmer is just, look at that. I mean, you really can't beat the effect of that. It's a gorgeous color, and I will keep this in my collection forever. I doubt I'll ever run. I doubt I'll need to repurchase this. A little goes a long way, so I'm glad I still have this in my collection. You know when I do reach for it? I will tell you, if I've done my whole eye for the day, like this, for instance, and then maybe I'm going to a party in the evening, I'll just pop this on on the lid. Just glams up your eyeshadow, boom. Okay, um, NYX Brown Eyeshadow. I have torn up my entire bathroom trying to find it. It was just a very nice matte mid-tone brown color, great in the crease. I have no idea where it went. I honestly, I have ripped apart my bathroom, all my storage stuff, I don't know where it is. What I usually reach for and have been reaching for is MAC Wedge, which is also a nice mid-tone brown. I don't know how I got the hit pan there. I don't know how that worked, but 
anyway, that's, that's my go-to brown. And if I want something a little bit um, darker, then I go for cork. But that's, that's my favorite. That's replaced the NYX um, brown. But I will say, you know, if NYX shadows are more your price point, they, I really do still like the square individual um, shades. I think they're, they're, you get a lot for your money and I think they're beautiful colors. Uh, the next one I bought, or actually someone sent to me, a subscriber sent to me, I had seen it in a Lisa Eldridge tutorial. She did a whole organic makeup tutorial and I really loved the, um, the finished look. I'm not into the organic makeup stuff so much, but um, I really love that shadow and it's the Lavera um, Mineral Eyeshadow and it's called Magic Gray. And it looks like that. And here's the scoop, okay. Organic might be good for you, but it's damn hard to work with because the stuff that you would have, the chemicals that you put in uh, makeup to make it blend and all that aren't in here. So it's very hard to the touch. That's what it looks like. It's just gray. It's very hard to the touch. It doesn't blend well. It's patchy. And the other thing is it's definitely obviously gray. It's cool toned. I don't really like myself in cool tones. So I don't reach for it like I used to. And I honestly, looking back, I don't reach for grays very much. I haven't found one that I particularly like all over my lid. That's just me. I don't know. So a dark gray smoky eye. Maybe I need to give another shot. If you have any recommendations for a particular gray shade that you think would look better on my eye, on my eyes, um, for my face, whatever, um, I can't talk today, uh, please let me know because maybe I'll give it another go. Okay, CoverGirl Professional Super Thick Lash Mascara. There wasn't anything wrong with it. I really loved it, and then I used it up and moved on to the next one, and, and then another one and another one, and three years later, I've probably used 20 different mascaras since then, and my current love is the Maybelline The Rocket Volume Express, and that's all I'm going to say about that. Might have to go back and revisit that other one when I use this one up. Redken Satin Wear 02 was a, was a hair product I was using at the time. And if you didn't know this already, my hair product of choice, and really the only thing I've been putting in my hair for months, is the Aveda Smooth, Smooth Infusion Naturally Straight. That's it. I've done videos on this. I've raved about this. I've wrote blog posts about this. I will link all that below. That's what's in my hair, and I love it. Okay, um, Bayou Vitality Splash. I don't have any more. It was one of those... Ooh, my hair's doing funky things. It was one of those um, aerosol, like, Mr. Spray thingies uh, a subscriber sent to me from Germany, and um, I loved it, and then I used it up. And now um, I don't have to get stuff sent to me from Germany. That has reached the American market, similar products. So... Uh, this is French, but you can get it at Sephora, Caudalie, Beauty Elixir. I'm going to do a little mist right now. Because even though it's fall, it's 90 degrees here. So there's that one. Um, who else? Like Just about everybody sells a version. Even Evian has mist aerosol water. So that's all good. I love the concept more than a particular brand. The next one I talked about was Inglot Cream Concealer. I used it up. I don't live anywhere near an Inglot, and I'm too lazy to order it online. My concealer, my favorite concealer for blemishes, is still the Maybelline Fit Me Concealer. I have it in four shades. I think it does a great job. And I just, I will repurchase and repurchase until I find something else that I love more. And then I talked about No Slip Hangers. Um, and I don't know why I didn't grab one to bring you, but I mean, everybody's seen them. They're like usually black and they're real thin and they're covered in what looks like velvet. Um, since that video, I've replaced every single hanger in my closet with one of those and... I love them. The only thing is they do break very easily, I have found. But, oh well, what are you going to do? And then, I had mentioned a ton of people that I really enjoyed watching that month. And I'm just going to run through those real quickly and tell you if I'm still watching them. So the first one was Emily Noel 83 which obviously I am still watching her. I adore her. Um, who doesn't? Rather Be Dancing 3. I would still be watching if she were still making videos. I miss you, Shauna. Um, LisaEldridge.com. Of course, still watching her. Um, I find that, has anyone else noticed she posts a lot less videos than she used to? I mean, that's just the nature of the beast. She is a working celebrity makeup artist, so her daytime job probably takes up a little more time than, you know, than she has for making YouTube videos. That's okay. Another one that's not putting up videos is Nurber XO. Nur, I miss you too. I know you've got an amazing life now, but I really would like to see you on my computer screen more often. And then Secrets Girl 10, we know her now as Allie Valentine, and if you're not watching her, she's a sweetheart, lovely girl, also in the UK. 
And um, I can't believe it's been three years since I found your channel. Wow. Um, so she's got a new website and a lot, and she's got, she has, um, they're not online yet, but you can order t-shirts that she's had made up that are really cute and I will be ordering one. Anyway, um, and then three years ago, okay, for those of you that have been around YouTube for a long time, one of the very first people that I subscribed to um, was Lollipop26, also known as Laura, also known as now by by now blog later. Anyway, I loved her videos back then. She's the most soothing voice. She's beautiful to look at. Her product selection was amazing. And then she stopped making YouTube videos and we all mourned her loss. I mean, she's not dead, but <laughs> YouTube died a little bit the day she stopped posting videos. Um, but she's since gone on to be a, hello, huge blogger. And she does do, I think almost daily posts. So it's not the end of the world. Um, so I still, religiously read her blog and she has a friend named Simone, Simone Scribes here on YouTube and she pops into her vlogs from time to time. So if you want a little taste of Laura, go watch Simone's channel. You should watch Simone's channel anyway, regardless of whether or not Laura is on there, but just saying. I will link everybody I mentioned down below and um, yeah, so that was all that was going on in September 2011. So Mimi and I are going to say goodbye. Say goodbye Mimi. She's, bye. I hope you enjoyed these Throwback Thursday videos. As always, if you make videos, think about doing this. You don't have to go back three years, but wouldn't it be nice to revisit your collection from a year ago even and see what's still hanging around? You never know, and it's kind of fun. It's a way to shop your stash. So please try doing this if you make videos, and if you watch videos and have a favorite YouTuber that you want to see do this, tell them to do it. Leave it in their comments. Anyway, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.